Good evening, most favorite seventh graders. Today I want to teach you about angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal. So if you would, go ahead and make this the title of the next free page in your math notebook and we'll get right to it. All right. Um, so we've looked a little bit before at angles formed at intersections. If I were to um, just draw two lines that uh, have an intersection here, doesn't matter how I draw them. We've looked at these angles formed where the two lines intersect, and there's really two things that keep coming up over and again, over and over again. The first is called vertical angles. Those are angles across the intersection, so those two angles are vertical, and also these two angles are vertical and vertical ang angles are congruent. They have the same measurement. So I don't have any measurements here, but if I did, you know, if I knew, I'm gonna estimate, if I knew this one was 30 degrees, then I would know this one was 30 degrees, or uh, if I knew this one was 135 degrees, I would know this one was 135 degrees. Those are called vertical angles. And then we've also used a lot when we see these intersections, we also use supplementary angles a lot. So if I take any one angle, it's part of two supplementary sets. So if I knew this one, I know this one and the one next to it, you know, they make a supplementary angle set here. Or I could go the other direction. They also make a supplementary set with this one. So those are the two uh, types of angles that keep coming up over and over again at intersections. And we're going to be looking at angles like that today in a slightly more complicated case. Um, we're going to talk about parallel lines and transversals, so I need to tell you what those are first. So let's start with parallel lines. If you haven't heard of these before, parallel lines are any lines that would never intersect no matter how far you extended them. So all three of these sets, if you extended these perfectly well forever and ever, the lines would never intersect. Neither would these, neither would these. They're all lines that would eventually never intersect as opposed to lines like, say, this, that even if we don't draw them intersecting, if you continued them forever, they would eventually intersect somewhere. Those are not parallel. So parallel lines are the ones like in this image that never intersect no matter how far they go. And a transversal we're gonna call today is a line that cuts across two parallel lines. This is what we're going to be looking at today from your title. So in this case, the two blue lines are parallel to each other. No matter how far those went, they would never intersect. And we would call this red line a transversal because it crosses both of them. It intersects with both of them. We'll look at that today. Same here. Lines M and lines N are parallel. That's how you write that in fancy math terms. Oh, I didn't write the right things, though. It's not M element. It's M and N are parallel to each other. That's how you write M is parallel to N in fancy math terms. Um, and then this we would call a transversal. So the two uh, gray lines would never intersect no matter how far they went. And this purple one cuts across them. That's called a transversal. So when you go back to your title, I'll have you write these down and we do, don't worry. Um, that's what we're talking about. Parallel lines with a transversal cutting them back from your title. So we're going to be looking at things like this. So here's an example, uh, two examples rather, of parallel lines formed by transversals. And I want to focus on the angles you can see. So if we look at their intersection points here and here, look closely at the four angles around each intersection and see what you notice. And do the same on the other one. Here's the two intersections, and they've got the angles numbered. Check out how those angles look. If you look carefully, since the lines, by being parallel, intersect the uh, transversal at the same angle, you'll notice the angles in the same place around the intersections are congruent to each other. So, for instance, I'll mark them in blue. This angle here on this part of the parallel lines is exactly the same angle as this one here. They're in the same position 
relative to the intersection. They're both down and to the left of it, and they both would have the same measurement because those two lines are parallel. Same with all the other ones. This angle and this angle would also have the same measurement. They would also be congruent. So would this angle and this angle. They're in the same place around the intersection, and since the lines are parallel, they make the exact same angle. Last but not least, this one does too. So the, the angles that I've labeled in the same color are called corresponding angles. They correspond to each other because they're in the same position around those intersections and they are congruent. So in this case, the blue one and the blue one would have the same measurement, the red one and the red one, the yellow one and the yellow one, the green one and the green one. Same over here. If you look around these intersections, since the gray lines are parallel, the the uh, angles in the same positions have the same measurements and we call them corresponding angles. So in this case, we know angle one is congruent to angle five because they are corresponding angles. They're in the same position around their intersection with the transversal. Also, angle two and angle six are corresponding angles. So they would have the same measurement. Same with three and seven, same with eight and four. They're all called corresponding angles. They're in the same place around the other intersection. So we can use that new fact to solve some new, more complicated looking angel, angle, angel, <laughs> angle problems. So check it out. So in this one, you'll notice there's eight, here, here are some parallel lines, right? X, Y and ZW, those are parallel, and we have this transversal cutting them, and that forms two intersections, which forms eight angles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Only one angle is given to me, but I actually could use that to find pretty much every other angle I see here. So in the question in particular, I'm asked about six and seven, here and here, and those seem impossible because I don't have any angle down at this intersection, nowhere. But since I do have some up here, I can use this idea of corresponding angles to figure some things out. So this one's 154. So if I go down here to angle five, that is a corresponding angle to the 154. So I actually know it too. So I actually know that angle five is 154 degrees because it is corresponding to or with uh, the other one that's 154. So that gives me a way into these angles down here. Now I can use that to find the rest. That's gonna tell me six. Now I know angle six is also 154 because it is vertical to angle five so they match and then i can use that to find angle seven uh, which i need to do so angle six and seven or angle five and seven it doesn't matter which pair i choose i can do these two make a supplementary or i can do these two make a supplementary won't really matter um, i know that that 154 plus whatever seven is makes a supplementary 180 set so 180 minus 154 is 26. So angle seven now I can find is 26. And I know that because it is supplementary with angle five or angle six, doesn't matter which. So I can just use that one and find a whole bunch of other stuff out. All right, open up your notebook. Let's start with some, oh, before you open up your notebook, I'm so sorry. Forgot to mention, close that notebook. Last thing, this only works with parallel lines. You'll notice here, line L and line M are not parallel. If we extended them, they would meet somewhere out here. And if these two lines are not parallel, the angles are not the same. I think you can tell pretty much that two and six, they're in the same position around the intersection, but they're definitely not the same angle because those are not parallel. Same with one and five, five is much wider than one. So this only works with parallel lines. All right, now open your notebook. 
pause here. First thing I want you to do is write down these vocabulary words we got. We got vocabulary, uh, parallel lines, transversal, and corresponding angles. So go ahead now and pause here and get those three important vocabulary words down and then unpause when you're ready for an example. All right, so here you'll also wanna pause and write down. We're gonna use just this one measurement given to find angle seven and angle eight. So let's do, um, I'm gonna have to probably label some more angles. As with all of these problems, they just have two, seven, eight. I might do two, I'm gonna label the other ones, three, four, five, and six. That way I can um, refer to which ones I'm talking about. So as with many of these problems, there's a couple routes you could take. You know, you could use this to find this and that to find that, or you could use this to find this and that to find that. There's like lots of routes to get to the answer here. I'm just gonna do one, but just like all these problems, there's a lot of ways you could get to the end. So I'm gonna start with figuring out angle five. I know angle five is the same as 53 in measurement because they are corresponding. They're in the same positions because they're parallel and this transversal, they're in the same positions around their intersection, which means they have the same measurement. So now to me, again, I could go to seven and then go to eight, but I'm gonna go to eight first. So I know five and eight have the same measurements. Angle five is also, oh, I'm sorry, angle eight is also 53 degrees. And I know that because it is vertical to, or vertical from, I never know which way to say that, vertical from angle five. So five is 53. So it's eight, and then I can use five to find seven, or I can use eight to find seven, doesn't matter. Either way, I'm gonna have a supplementary set. So angle seven is gonna be the rest of that 180. So it's 180 minus 53, 180 minus 50 is 130, minus three I think is 127. So angle seven is 127 because it is supplementary with angle five or eight, it doesn't matter which. And that's how you do it. So if you know how that corresponding angle business works, you can solve whole new types of these angle puzzles where you can go from here to here and here to here and all that good stuff. Uh, one last thing to write before we stop. Um, I do wanna remind you one last time, this only works for parallel lines and I think it's important that you write that down. In this case, J and K are not parallel. And you'll notice because of that, the angles definitely don't match. D and F are corresponding angles. They're definitely not the same measurement. C and H, same business. If the two original lines are not parallel, you do not have um, matching angles around the intersection, okay? Y'all, that's how you use uh, corresponding angles in problems involving parallel lines and a transversal. Hope that made some good sense to you. You guys are making great progress with these other angle problems. Hopefully this was um, just as helpful. Uh, if not, give this video another watch and I know you'll come to class tomorrow super confident. And if you do feel good about this, you're all set and I'll see you tomorrow.